Okay, guys, to the saints of the Most High God. Guys, we have about one minute. I know I'm just getting here. I'm just getting here, saints, but we got about a minute. Then. I'm going to give a minute, then we're going to pull out of this thing. Pull out of this thing real fast. So call a loved one. Call a family member. Get yourself together. Be ready, prepared, and to receive something of the Lord, if you will, saints. Okay. This is going to be interesting. Bless your name, saints. Thank God. I thank God that you have made your way here with us. Um, let me get this thing up, Ray. One thing about me. I'm easily distracted by things that will cause me. Okay. If you will, saints. Call a loved one. Get yourself together. Let's go before. Get ready to go before the throne of grace in prayer that we may be able to go together and partake in the word of God together. Remember, we're walking out of the natural realm into the spiritual realm. So what we want to do is trust God every step of the way. Now, let's step out of the natural into the spiritual. That is prayer. Prayer is nothing but an earthly request for heavenly wisdom. Let's get some wisdom, guys, and let's see can we disseminate this wisdom to you guys and see what God has to say to us, for us, about us. Let's go before the throne of grace in prayer. Father, we honor you. We bless you and we thank you for who you are and for all that you have done. We thank you for this door that you have opened for us this day. By waking us up this morning and starting us on our way, you have woke us up, Lord, in a sound mind. You have given us health and peace. You have given us strength and you have taken us through this day thus far, Lord, and you have protected us from the dangers, seen and unseen, known and unknown. We thank you, Lord, that you have found favor. We have found favor in your sight that you allowed us, Lord God, to live thus far. So, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus right now that you bless us that we have our minds set to receive from you this day. So, Lord, we remove every distraction that is set before us, Lord, by putting our minds, Lord God, focused on you. For there is what peace is. For your word states, he that keeps his mind on me, I'll keep him in perfect peace. So, Lord, we want to stay focused on the word. Focus on what you have to say to us, for us, about us. So, Lord, I pray, Lord God, for three categories of people before we move forward, Lord, in this Bible study. I pray for the ones that are here right now, Lord. I pray that you bless them. Help them to stay focused and in on the word. Help them to sit with a spirit of expectation, not judgment. That they may expect to hear something from you to deal with what they are going through and facing in their lives. So, Lord, help them that they may remove any distractions and stay focused on the moment. And to those, Lord God, that are trying to make their way to a safe place that where they may be able to sit down and study with us via the word of God. Help them to stay focused, Lord God, that they may not put themselves in any danger or anyone else. But help them to get to a safe place where they're able to come into the word with us, Lord, and study it to find out what is it that you have for them. And to those, Lord, that will not be joining us today for whatever reason. I plead the blood of Jesus that you watch over and protect them, Lord. Bless them, Lord God, that they may have in their heart our desire to want to know your will for their lives and to uh, follow up with this message, Lord, to find out what is it that you have to say to them and for them, Lord. I pray that, Lord, you put it in their heart, Lord, that they may make, make the provisions to be able to be with us at another day in time. But help them to go back and study the message, Lord, for themselves. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. So with that said, Lord, I, by my own free will, give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over this message. Let him have his way in exegeting the word of God to the people of God that we may know our God and know what he desires of us. Oh, Lord, we thank you and we bless you, Lord God. And we also say, Lord, we ask you to bind the hands of the enemy that he do not cause distractions, Lord, where we will not be focused on that which you have laid before us. Now, for doing this for us, Lord, we're so careful to give your name the praise. Now, this is a prayer that we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. For it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. And we thank God and we bless him, guys, for that opportunity. Remember, always go before the throne of grace and crying out to God, saints. And believe in God every step of the way, okay? That's what you need to do. That's the mindset you have to have in Christ Jesus. And that is to know what it is that God desires for you, from you, and about you. And so that's what we want to do. And we want, what we want to do now is get into the world. I ask you to stay focused, guys. Now, we are finally, guys, we're in the, um, if you will, we're in the last part of the book of Acts. The latter part, guys, this is it. Acts, the 28th chapter. We're going to take some time and we're going to go through this chapter. And we have shut out the book of Acts. And in our travel through the book of Acts, we have learned so much. Thank you, Lord. But before I go any further, it's something the Lord impressed on my heart. And I want to say to you guys here today. So I want you guys to take an ear and I want you to hear me, please. I want to say to you, thank you. 
Thank you so much for allowing me to plant into your life. It is an honor for me. Saints, it's a lot of things that you can be doing. You don't have to be here. You can be distracted in somewhere else or doing something else. And But you have decided to take time from your busy schedule to sit down and hear me expound on the word of God. So I just want to say to you, I so appreciate you taking time from your busy schedule and giving me this opportunity. Now, I pray, guys, that you pray for me, that I have an ear to hear God and that I may study to open up his word, that I may be able to give it to you. I don't know it all. As I often say, all I know is not all there is to know. So I'm learning along the way with this with you guys. So much stuff that I'm learning. And I'm picking it up with you. So we're learning together. So I just want to tell you, I so appreciate, I so appreciate you taking time from your busy schedule and joining me for Bible study. I pray it's not a waste of your time. And even through all of my quirkiness and distractions and sometimes, you know, just totally off key, you guys are right there with me. So I want to say I thank you. I appreciate you. And I thank God for you. Okay. So. Pray for me as we go on through this lesson today, Acts the 28th chapter. And in our ever popular slingshot effect, what do we do, saints? We want to go back and touch bases on what we had last week. So last week, guys, we was in Acts. If you was, it was Acts the um Acts the 27th, uh, Acts the 27th chapter, and we was at the latter parts. So our slingshot effect is we go back and I'm gonna read what we studied last week, briefly touch it, then we move on to new information. Amen? Okay, so. Now, I'm going to have to say, guys, you got to bear with me because my mind is going to be all over the place with this. Because my paper that I had, I threw it away by accident. And so all of my notes that I had to remind us of what we talked about last week, I threw them out. So I'm going to wing it here, okay? And so Acts the 27th chapter and verse number 37, this is what the word says. It says, and we were all in the ship, 200, three score, and 16 souls. And when they had, and when they had eaten enough... They lightened the ship and cast out the wheat into the sea. And when it was day and they knew not the land, but they, they discovered a certain creek with a shore into, into the which they, they, were, they were minded if, they would, if it was possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors and, came and committed themselves unto the sea, they loosened the rubber bands and horsed up the horsed up the mainsail to the wind and made towards shore and falling into a place where two, two seas met, they ran the ship aground and the fore part stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the half part was broken with the violence of the waves and the soldiers counsel was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should swim out and escape. But the, but the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim, cast themselves into the sea and get to land. And the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. And so what we had right there, guys, when we touch bases, in the study last week, there was quite a few things that we um, begin to study and dig into and begin to learn and know about the word of God. And which was the people of God. I just want to touch bases with you and let you guys know this. You have to stay um, the whole situation when Paul had already warned these men what would happen. And they decided to go on anyway. And the people that got Paul in the, in the mess was trying their best to get off the ship and leave them. But the centurion, you know, he, Paul had already spoken to a higher authority and told these guys, told you, told them that if these guys get off the ship, all of us going to die. And so the centurions made them stay right there with them. And so as they came in, you know, to the ship, what they did is they wrecked the ship just offshore, just off of where they were. They was close enough to land where they could ram the ship to keep it stable. And then the rest of them wanted to make their way. The um, centurion gave them the word because remember, as we touch bases that, well, first of all, there was quite a few people on the ship. That was 203 score and 16, which is 200. Uh, a score is 20. So that's 60 plus 16, 70, um, 76 souls. So that was 200, um, 276 souls that was on that um, ship, which um, when, they, when they rammed it, 
the centurion had already given word that all of the prison, not the centurion, but the, the, the council was, or the order was, if a um, ship like this is wrecked, kill the prisoners. Why? Because Rome had a law that if those prisoners got away, you had to bear the cost. But we saw where the centurion was willing to take the responsibility for what was going to happen with these prisoners by saying no to the soldiers. The higher authority spoke to the soldiers. Do not kill them. And he did this for Paul's sake. Remember, there's a chaos and everything's going on. He couldn't look around and find Paul. And then say, Paul is okay, so now you can kill the rest of them. In that time, he just made the decision. Everybody live because of Paul. Sometimes with you, because of the things you do for the Lord, because of your stand for the Lord and love the Lord, God will bless everybody around you just so he can make sure you're blessed. And so that's why everything you put your hands to, the word tells you, it's going to prosper. On your job, it's a benefit for them to have you there because everything you touch, it prospers. Now, some places are, are foolish. To where they will get rid of you if you're doing what you're supposed to do. Now, you as a saint can't be there and be the laziest person on the job. But if you're doing your job, as the word tells us, we have to do everything wholeheartedly as unto the Lord. So as believers, we need to be the best on the job. We need to be the best at whatever it is. Not saying we're looking for the pride of uh, saying I'm better than everybody, but we're doing the thing as we're doing it to the Lord. We just want to give him our best, our all. Christians should be the work on time. You should be the one they have don't have to look over to make sure you're doing your job. The Christian should always be willing to be there early and leave late if that need be. Now you say, well, why would I do that? You're not working. You're working at a company. You're working for the Lord. And you need to remember that. So you be have God, uh, always give God your best a little earlier, stay later for the purpose of making sure that God's name look good. And so because of that, the company will find favor with you and you'll find your promoting going promoting up and up and up. Now you may say that you don't know my job. It won't do that. Well, that's their curse. That's their curse. The answer to their problem is sitting right there in front of them and because they won't use it. That's their problem. So Paul, that's what it was for his protection. They was willing um, to let all of these prisoners live. Now, in that situation, in all that chaos, if I was a prisoner, although I'm looking at the land this way, I'm a slight, just slight off course. I'm going to get over here and run it. I'm going to get over here and go about my business. But Paul, um, for the centurion, gave them the word. It says, no, let everybody take a swim, go ahead and swim, and the rest, you grab onto something. And we're going to get you there. We're going to get you there to um, get you to board. Sometimes your ship of life may be crushed, tore up and broken. But Jesus is going to bring you in the shore. Now, you may be just barely holding on to some of the stuff you had. But the thing is, God want to get you there. Not so much with your stuff, but he want to get you there because you can get more stuff. You just can't get another you. And so what you got to do is totally trust God and believe God in the midst of all of it. And that's where we were in Acts, the 27th chapter. We closed out that last part. We believed God. We trust God. So now we are starting, guys, and we are going into um, the final part of the book of Acts. And this is his chapter. So we need to realize what had happened. Now, remember, they came to shore. They did not come in there um, cruising and everything is nice. And they had... Um, if you would, captains or spokespersons on the ship saying, you have now just arrived at Allen, such and such. No, they were just barely holding on. And so you need to learn in life when the tornadoes come or when the, the troubled times come in life, you can't be busy fixing yourself up, trying to look pretty in front of nobody. You just got to get there. We'll get straightened up later on. And so the problem is so many saints want to put on a good projection of an image. Although they are going through hell, they want to make it look like they're just fine because their pride and their arrogance don't want no one to know that they're suffering. But when you cry out, God is willing to give an answer to help you. But as long as you stay in pride, there's not much God can do for you. So a lot of people are suffering. You're suffering. Why? Because you're too shameful or too prideful. To tell someone you're going through. Two is better than one. For if one falls down, the other will help him up. But woe to the person that walks alone. There need to be someone in your life that you can confide in and talk to and be able to um, really spit up on. And they need to be mature enough to know that uh, in essence they can eat fish and spit out the bones. Meaning they can hear you in all of your mess or see you in all of your mess. And cover you up. Clean you up and cover you up. And move from there. We'll deal with um, the problem later on. Let's just get you cleaned up. Get you covered up. And then let's move forward. Is that okay, saints? 
Okay, and so that's where we were in 27, Acts 27. Now, Acts the 28th chapter. We're starting a brand new chapter, and this right here, guys, will end us in the book of Acts, okay? So let's stay focused here. It says now, Okay, so in verse number one, it says, and when they were escaped, then they, then they knew that this island was called Melita. So what we was looking at, guys, right here, they saying here, after all of that they have gone through, after everything that they have been dealing with, you will find out that, you know, they had gotten finally to safety. Now, nobody asked the question, where are we at? Where, where, where are we going to be going to? Well, I got to go over there to that island. No, when you're in a crisis with your life, you don't care. If you are drowning out in the middle of an ocean or a swimming pool, whatever, you are drowning, you don't care who reached down to help you up. You don't care if it's a man or a woman. You don't care if they're old or young. You don't care if they're black or white. You don't care if they're gay or straight. Only thing you know is a hand is reaching down to help you, and so you accept the help. So they were saying that in this situation, they didn't care. They just came from all of this turmoil with their lives. And then the word says, and when they had escaped, they knew that the island was called Malaita. So they just now found out where they at. And that's what you need to understand. Sometimes you won't know where God is going to put you until you get there. So you can't, sometimes you don't know who God's going to use to help you. Until he send them. You just don't know what God's going to do. Don't tell God how to be God. He was God before you got here. He is God while you are here. And he'll be God when you're gone. So don't tell God how to do his job. Your job is to just accept whatsoever it is that God gives you. And when you do that, you'll be thankful for what God has done. So they didn't care what island they was on. I don't want to go to that island. Let's get them. You know, sometimes God will move you out of suburbs and move you into the ghetto. Why? Because of somebody in the ghetto he wants you to meet. Somebody in the ghetto he wants you to redeem. Everybody would love to move from the ghetto to the suburbs. But are you willing to move from the suburbs to the ghetto? Meaning, if God take all of your status from you and put you down to nothing, are you willing? Are you willing to go? You just don't know what God is going to do. You don't know his plans. I recall a time in my life where, again, my wife and I, we had our own business, and it was very lucrative. And we did what we supposed to do. And I dressed up and go to work, guys. I mean, I would um, depend on where we were going, if we was caught, nice suits, uh, nice clothes. Always kept, you know, I had the time to keep my, my hair and everything done. Hit the weights and body looked really good because we had to stay toned, man. Just awesome job that we had. But then life happened. Life happens and the job shut down. And so I had to go work at this, this place to where it was just nasty. Cobwebs with dirt webs. There wasn't cobwebs. There were dirt webs all over the place. The place was very dusty and nasty. People did not care at all. It was just a mess. And I was working there and people with records that was horrible. All tangled up and in problems with the law. All kind of felons was in the place. And they had better jobs than me at the place. Here I am, not a, not, nowhere on my record is an elf. Nowhere near my record. Always did what I was supposed to do. Dotted the I's, crossed the T's, did what was, Robert was the good little boy, was where he was supposed to be, doing what he was supposed to do. But God, in the midst of it all, ripped away from us, and I was stuck into that hell hole. And let me tell you something. To this day, some of my best friends have come from that place. I love them. I thank God for the passion that God gave me. Sometimes God will break up your life to get you to where you had to be. Because if in the midst of my life, if I would have went there and God says, I would have went there and they said, Robert, you want to work here? I would have been like, no, I want to work at this place. But because of that, guys, because God thrust me in there, he ran the ship of my life right into that place. And so I didn't complain. I didn't murmur. I was happy about going to work. I was happy. It didn't make me a difference. I didn't need to wear a brand name watch or a suit of this name. I just wanted to work so I could provide for my family. Sometimes, saints, God is going to let your life be a shipwreck. Because if he told you where he wants you to go, you won't go. So he wrecked your life so you'll be happy to go. You'll be happy to go. And so that's what it was. Now he found out where we was at. They found out where it was at. Sometimes you just don't know where God is going to send you until he gets you there. 
until he gets you there. So once he gets you there, then you know the name. And so they found out the name of the island. You know, they, let's get to understanding. Let's get some clarity as to where we're at now. Because you can then get your bearings straight to figure out where you're going. See, if you don't know where you're at, you don't know how to get to where you're going. Because you got to start somewhere. If you don't know where you're at and where you need to be is over that way, but you start going over that way, you're going in the wrong direction. To measure anything, guys, anything, you need two things. You need a starting point and you need a finishing point. If you get your starting and your finishing point, you can then do some measurements. And sometimes in life, saints, you don't know where you are. So you have no idea where to go. And so you can't measure your life or where you're at. You don't know where you're going, so you can't measure your life. You can't just be aimlessly wandering. That's not what God wants from us. So you have to write a vision and set it up. So you're sitting here, you're sitting here, God is working this thing out. So God has laid this thing out before Paul. They crashed him and God put him on the land where he wants to put him on. Now, why would you think God put him there? I found something amazing, guys. As a matter of fact, fresh manner, fresh manner. And when you hear me say that, there's something that the Holy Spirit has just given to my mind. And so I'm able to say, wow, I'm eating along with you guys, fresh manner. And so why do you think God allowed him to be on this island? Well, I'm going to show you why God allowed him to be on this island. Thank you, Jesus. Look at verse number two. Verse number two, he says, And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the presence, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And so, as you begin to look at this, guys, you need to focus on something. Look what he says right there in the first part of verse number two. And the barbarous people, these are people that don't know anything. These people don't know the Lord Jesus. They know nothing about him. So wouldn't it be fit that God would take this thing and wreck this thing and put you on an island where you can then teach the people who don't know about Jesus, all about Jesus. Sometimes the job you had is not for you. God put you there so you can be a light unto the darkness of the world that you are into now. And so these people, barbarous meaning they had no idea. They're pretty much barbarians. Barbarians mean ignorant, not knowing. So they were not serving the God that we know of. And so Paul is introducing them to the God that he have come to know, who is Jesus the Christ. And so you'll find that. So again, these people, um, these people show them no little kindness. Now, what you need to understand is, is um, this. You have to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. So the barbarous people, they didn't know them. They didn't check their credentials. They didn't want to know if they had money. They didn't want to know if they would be able to hook them up later on. No, these people saw that these people came in in a wreck. And what they did is say, well, what we're going to do is it's raining. So it's standing reason if they just came off the ocean and it's raining and it's cold. These people need things. See, sometimes people don't have to ask you for nothing. All you have to do is be tentative of their situation. Look at their situation and you can see discernment will be able to tell you what it is that they need. It doesn't take a genius to realize if it's raining and cold, they need to be out of the cold cover from the rain and need to be warm. That does not take a PhD. And so that's one thing you need to understand. You need to do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. You have something to offer. You have something to offer. See, look at these people. These people didn't have no high tech, uh, fancy, whatever. Next one, it says, the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. So these ain't people that have this sprawling land where they have um, top of the line, everything. Listen, your house may not be the best house. You may not have all of the amenities. You may not have central air. You may not be able to even have lights. But to a person that's tired and sleepy, if you have a bed, even if the mattress is on the floor, that is more than enough for them. What I'm saying is this. You may not have what the other person have, but what you do have is a heart towards God. I can't give you much, but I give you what I have. No, I may not be able to give you steak, but I can give you a sandwich. And to a hungry person, it makes no difference. You have something to offer to people. No, you may not have a PhD. No, you may not went to Bible school. No, you may not have these things, but you have a heart towards God. And sometimes people don't need nothing but someone to sit down and listen to them. And if you would be friendly enough to sit down with a person and not judge them, 
but listen to them. Sometimes the pain is so great. Sometimes the hurt is so deep that all a person want to do is just talk. They just want to talk it out. They don't need you to give them an answer. They don't need an answer. They just need somebody to listen and let them spit it all out. And every now and then, you just say, I understand. Oh, may God bless you. But sincerely listen to them. And you will find out you will be a closer friend to that person than anyone. You have something to offer. These people did not have all these degrees. They did not have the best of anything. They was barbarous people. But he said they understood. And they showed us no little kindness. Meaning they was very benevolent. They wasn't stingy. Here go a piece of bread. Y'all share it. No, they came out and they come, they just they didn't care about the people. They didn't know if they were prisoners. They didn't know they didn't know nothing about them at that time. What they did is they came out to feed the people. It's just like what we have just witnessed here um, a couple of weeks ago. What took place down in um, Asheville, as terrible as it was. It now let me say this. Let me go ahead and put this out here because this is a blessing to me. It is amazing to me how the body of Christ showed out. They showed out the body was there before the government got there. And that's the way it should have been. That's the purpose of the church. It should have been. So the body of Christ was there before the government got there. And the body of Christ was taking care of people. They were searching and they was feeding and they was warming and they was doing the things for the people. Praying for them, everything they need, the body of Christ. And then people came from all over just bringing in food. They had a, uh, if you could say it, they had a crisis, a crisis of compassion. So many, for so fast, so long, so fast, since so much. They were not able to do much, but what they could do, they did. And all of us doing really made it happen. And that's why I say to Firm Foundation, that's why we give to certain ministries, because they can do things bigger than us. They can do it faster than us. And that's why we give to missions. Ones on the ground that can get it done. Some places find foundation. We as the church can never get there, but we support the ones that do. So God blesses us and saying to them, that's what these people was. They did what they can to help out. He says they showed us no little kindness. They was there, prayed and cried. They held hands and covered and fed and gave, you know, all of these things. They did these things. They showed us no little kindness. And it says, uh, as for they kindled a Kindled a fire. Let's get you warm, and and received us eat and received us everyone because of the present rain. So it didn't matter. Just come on in. Come on in. You know, you'll find out that when you are doing what God has called you to do, some of you just have a spirit, a, 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 a hospitality spirit. Eighty people in your house. You're trying to feed them all. You you okay with it? You okay with? I don't mind. It's a crisis. It's okay, guys. We'll just do what we can do and feed who you can. And that's what it is right there. They looked at him and got him out the rain and said because it was raining and because it was cold. So sometimes you don't go down to a person and start pointing out everything they don't done wrong. How you mess up. How you wreck your car like this. Listen, just cover them. Get them cleaned up. Get them warm. And what we'll do is then we'll be able to deal with that stuff later on. Okay. So these are people that did not know the Lord. And so now you got one that loved to proclaim the word Jesus right there. With people that do not know Jesus. Do you see God's plan now? Do you see God's plan? Now, no, God didn't want the ship to wreck, but you didn't think God knew it was going to wreck. Of course, well, since it's going to wreck, let me wreck it right over here while I'm going to fix not only this, but let me fix this also. Two things at one time. So that's what God is doing. Sometimes in your life as a wreck, God said, well, let me fix a couple of things at one time. I'm going to let you wreck over here where I can get the word to this person, but I'm going to also straighten you out at the same time. So that's what you need to understand. You have something to offer. God wants you to offer it. So remember, you got to do unto others because you don't know who you're going to do this to. You're going to reach people that, sometimes you're going to reach people that you will never, ever, ever really know or meet. But they're going to do a great thing for God. Let me say this before we move forward. There is a thing in the business world called compound interest. Okay? And so the interest continues to compounding on itself. It can see you compiling on itself. And so when you find yourself in a combined interest, things just grow. Well, God is trying to set you up as a believer with compound interest. 
That's why he's telling you to spread the gospel. Because as you spread the gospel and someone hear the gospel being proclaimed or give their life to Christ under you, now that person go out and get other people saved. Well, God says, I'm going to reward you for that soul you saved, but now that soul is saving souls. So it's giving you compound interest when it comes to the body of Christ. God says, you have been rewarded because what you sold. See, when you sow a thing and something comes up, it's going to produce a lot of it. So when you reach out and do what thus says the Lord and God lead a person to you or lead you to a person and you talk to that person and your lifestyle and that person watches you and then that person comes to Christ. Now, that's a soul that you have won for the sake of Christ. You will be rewarded for that soul. But then that soul goes out and wins souls. And because you did what you did, God says, I'll bless you tremendously. Let me say this before we move forward. Everybody says they want to be Billy Graham. A lot of believers, um, preachers or people in leadership say, I want to be like, I want to win souls like Billy Graham. But you know what I wonder? Who was it that led Billy Graham to Christ? That's what I want to know. Who, won, who led him to Christ? So you may not be the next Billy Graham, but you may be the one that lead the next Billy Graham to Christ. And all of it works for the kingdom of God's sake. You got something to offer, saints. Make sure you are able to do for others as you want them to do for you. But understand you have something to offer. It may not be the best, but all you have to give, give that. You can't do no more than your best, okay? And so the word says here, it says, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and lined them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened onto his hands. Let me see. Let me say this, guys. I, I mean, you need to understand. Sometimes problems just going to come. Life going to get the life in on you. And sometimes you ain't have nothing to do with it. You are minding your own business and life would just get the life in on you. Paul did nothing wrong. He shouldn't have been on a ship in the first place. But nevertheless, he ends up on a ship. And so while he's on the ship, you got these soldiers in their lives. Because look at everywhere Paul moved. Everything he's touching is bringing life. That's how you know. I told you this before. I asked my dad, how do you know if something is of God or of the devil? My dad told me this. He was a wise man in the Lord. And I thank God so much for him. You're looking at compound interest with my dad because he led me to Christ. And because of that, I am able to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to you today. So my dad, I asked him that question. How do you know if something is of God or if it's of the devil? And I'll never forget his answer. He told me, he said, son, if it brings life, it is of God. If it brings death, it is of the devil. It's that simple. Now, I'm not saying God won't kill, but God will kill for the purpose of bringing life. But the devil will literally deal for the purpose of killing it. So a thing may happen, guys. You may lose something. But God says, I'm strengthening you because it's something you're going to go through. So if it brings life, so think about your words before you say it. If you're going to say something to someone, do it brings life or do it bring death? Meaning are you going to hurt that person or are you going to give them life? And even if you have to hurt that person's feelings, do you say it in a spirit of, um, a spirit of meekness? Or are you trying to purposely dig in and hurt a person? That's not the way God moves. That's not the way he moves. So what Paul did, so you find out, again, look at what happened. Now, Paul just came off the shipwreck of a ship, and many of us be still crying. I shouldn't even been on the ship anyway. I ain't even doing that. They falsely accused me. But look at how much God has saved since they lied on Paul. Look at how much has been saved. They didn't listen to him, but now the soldiers listened to him, and he had talked to them. They, they know about Jesus. The, ship, the uh, prisoners on the ship, they know about Jesus. Now we're on a barbarous island. They know about Jesus. So all of this, God says, everything, not most things, not a lot of things, not some things, but all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. So no matter what you find yourself in, God says, I'm going to work it for my good. And so that's what Paul is looking at. I shouldn't have been on the ship, but I'm on this ship. I'm stuck out in this ocean. I'm almost going to die out here. I'm now stuck on the island. God says, I got you. Now I'm coming to an island. Now look at what happens here. Now Paul has went through everything just like everybody else on that ship, right? I want you to see something as a believer. Look again. It says when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, Paul just wasn't sitting around. People needed help. And so he was still serving. He was just as tired as the rest of them. He had just went through a traumatic situation as rest of them. Hey, quit running the Victim Olympics. We got so many saints running the Victim Olympics. They're a victim of everything. You don't know what happened to me. My daddy took my puppy when I was little, and I've been traumatized ever since then. Quit running a victim. 
God has made you an overcomer. I'm not saying it didn't hurt. I'm not saying you haven't lost nothing. But what I am saying is God has made you an overcomer. So overcome this thing. Quit being a victim. Start serving God. Give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. So Paul, after all this had taken place, he didn't sit down and talk about how that bad things was. He saw people had a need. And listen to what the word says. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, that let you know he wasn't sitting around. He was out working. The sticks didn't come to him. He had to go out there and get the sticks. What was the purpose of the sticks? Not so he could build him a hut for himself, but to warm everybody that was around. And because of that, he lied them on the fire. He was doing what he's supposed to do. I got the sticks and I lied the sticks on the fire. So evidently he grabbed the pile. And when he lied them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened onto him. Because he laid the sticks on the fire, the fire heat to the, hit to the snake. The snake jumped out and bit Paul. Jumped onto his hand and poisoned the snake. is giving it to him. And so what Paul does in this situation, saints, look at it. Look at what is taking place. All he is trying to do is serve. My time is up. My time is up, family. And we're going to have to pick up next week, right where we left off today. I pray something was said and something was beneficial for you. And it's not, guys, about the quantity. It's about the quality. We only got to two and a half verses. We ain't even started explaining three real good yet. Two and a half verses. But let me ask, did you get something out of the two and a half? Now you go back and study this and find out what God has done or what God is saying to you, for you. Let's see what God teaches you about those two and a half verses. Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. We thank you, Lord, for the time that we have had in the studying of your word. I plead the blood of Jesus and pray right now that the saints, Lord, heard something that was beneficial to them. Help us all, Lord, to grasp your word. Abide with your word in our lives. Help us that we may continue to love you, Lord, in all that we do, Lord. And that's the way we do that is keeping your commandments. So that which you have given us, help us to hold it near and dear to our heart, Lord. That we may plant this deep down in our heart, that it may take root and sprout up. Let us, Lord, see the growth thereof of your word in our lives, that we may be able to spread seed to others. Lord, we thank you. We honor you and bless you because you have taken the time to feed us. So generously, Lord, let us feed others thy word. And we'll be so careful to give your name to praise. Now, this is a prayer we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. For it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. If you'd agree with that prayer, saints, say amen. Hey, let me ask you a question. Have you been just way up surfing and just so happen you stopped by this page or this channel and you sat down and you listened to this preacher proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and you say, this is what I have been looking for. What? The word. God has touched me through the mouth of this person. And you now know that this is what I'm looking for. Now I want to make a decision to give Christ my life. Are you that person? Are you one that have heard the word and say, I know now what it is or who it is that have been calling me? It's Jesus. And I want to make it right with him by getting in line with his word. I want to give my life to Christ. If you're that person, I say, thank you, Jesus, so much for you. And what we're going to do is walk with you through God's plan of salvation. Now, let me ask before we move further. You may be one that once knew Jesus. You knew better. But life, like your ship wrecked and it tore all your life apart and you walked away from Christ. But now you have found yourself, you have drifted up on the island and you're ready to get it back in line with him. Now, are you that person? If you one that once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you turned and walked away and now you want to rededicate your life to Christ, I have great news for you. Come, walk with me with the person that once knew Jesus, that never knew Jesus, and let's together give our life to Christ. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity that you have given me 
to come before the throne of grace. I take full advantage of this opportunity, Lord, by repenting. I ask you, Jesus, forgive me for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. I ask you, Jesus, right now, by my own free will, to come into my life. Sit on the throne of my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus, you are Lord. I believe in my heart that Jesus, God has raised you from the dead. And according to your word, I am saved. I thank you, Lord, for accepting me. I right now, of my own free will, stand on the authority of your word and say, I've accepted you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Therefore, I am saved. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. We've been waiting for you. And as I say, guys, you gave your life to Christ. You've never been saved. You gave your life to Christ. All heaven is throwing a party on your behalf. But while the party was going on and the cheering was going on, God slipped out of the party. Why? He's the shepherd that came to find you, that one that once knew Jesus, and turned and walked away. For he said, I am married to the backslider. So if you are either that one that just gave your life to Christ, that you have become Lord and Savior, or rededicated your life, put it in the comment section that we may be able to celebrate with you and let the people of God know. We thank God so much for you. Now you may ask, what do I do now, preacher, that I have given my life to Christ or I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Well, you find you a good Bible-believing church. And what you do is you sit down and learn the word of God. Now you may say, I'm confused. I don't know what that will be. This is new to me, or I don't know of one. I've, I've been a church hurt, and I don't want to bother anymore with churches. Okay, but then stay right here with us, and we will teach you the word of God until God strengthen you enough to where you can go be able to sit in a body of local believers and be able to grow with them. You may say, okay, then, what does it take to be a member of Firm Foundation? Two questions. We ask you one. Do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, uh, yeah, I believe it. That's one thing. The second thing is we say, are you willing to obey the rules and the regulation of this ministry so as long as they line up with the word of God? You say, yeah, I'm willing to do that. Well, then we say, welcome to Firm Foundation Outreach Ministry, a ministry that loves people right where they are and then work with them to get them to where Christ wants them to be. So if you've done that, put that in the comment section. Now you say, guys, I want to help support the ministry. How do I support the ministry? You say, well, um, there's a QR code right here. Or you can send it snail mail. Well, why do I send it to you? Well, the next question you may have is, okay, then, well, you're located. I want to come and visit you guys. We are a shaky, handy, lovey people. So you say, okay, well, how do we come and visit? The same place that you want to send the snail mail to mail if you want to donate or help support the ministry. We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South, Kernersville, North Carolina. That's in the uh, state of North Carolina, in the city of Kernersville. Get off either one of the 40s, turn back like you're going to High Point down 66, and you will find us. If you're coming from High Point, turn like you're going to Kernersville, you will see us before you get into Kernersville. Or just Google it. You Google it, it'll put you right there, guys. So here's our times that we would love to be with you guys. We're low, um, our time is Wednesday night Bible study. We start at 7 p.m. We finish at 7.45, guys. Just 45 minutes of your time. And we'll thank God for you. Sunday mornings, 9 a.m., Christian education. Dynamite um, part of service. You can get there, guys, and be able to ask questions or just listen. Um, we have Reverend Watkins or different teachers that will be teaching for the purpose of being able to understand the Word of God and grow. Then we have Sunday morning, um, a, a Sunday morning service, 10 a.m. Guys, we would love to see you there. We would love to see you there. Hey, keep loving the Lord and keep obeying. God understands that your ship has been wrecked. God wants you to float to shore because there's somebody on shore. He wants you to lead to him. He loves you. He cares for you. He has given you his word. He will never allow you to be tempted above what you are able. Hey, thank you guys for the time that we have had in the word of God together. You guys be blessed. In Jesus' name. <laughs>